As much as the continued development of Tyrese Maxey, the excitement of the play of Kelly Oubre Jr., and the intrigue of what the roster could round out to be as the Sixers still hold just 13 roster spots out of the required 15, there really is only one man that is in control of what the future could be for the Sixers, and that being Joel Embiid and the status of his knee. Now, we have not, even being five weeks out, we have not received the update that we expected from the Sixers organization regarding what a potential return timeline could be. We have not had this moment where the PR drops a little statement regarding things, but what we do have is a couple quotes in and around the team from some national reporters, from Nick Nurse himself. So I wanted to dive into those specifically, as well as take a look at the schedule and the outlook from here. So I want to kick things off and begin with this quote from Ramona Shelburne that I know had some negative connotation and kicked around the Sixers universe in not the greatest space. So I want to kick with kick off with what she said here and Ramona on NBA Today saying, quote, well, Joel Embiid's not anywhere close right now to coming back, but he is able to get on the court, do some light work. The hope that they have in Philly is that they can just stay in the mix for Joel Embiid to come back for the last week or so of the season, and at least where he has a chance to get back some conditioning before the playoffs. So not a very positive update here from Shelburne. Obviously, the number one thing that I think sticks out to me is that first line where she says, well, Joel Embiid's not anywhere close right now to coming back. That's not ideal, but I do think that's something that's not entirely unexpected at this point. And I always do think it's important to note when speaking about Ramona Shelburne that she is one of the more tapped in national reporters when it comes to Joel Embiid, that there is some sort of connection and relationship there between Shelburne and the Embiid camp, that when when you look back at kind of the bigger moments in Embiid's career from a national perspective that Ramona has been the the reporter with the inside scoop this showing face during the Ben Simmons situation and a number of other just moments throughout his career so I do think that her words do hold weight here but I also think that with Joel Embiid this is something that's not entirely unexpected that these Sixers are intentionally playing things close to the vest and that's kind of the way that Embiid wants to go about it that I, I have been led to believe that this has more to do with Embiid's desire for the way things should be done than it does for the Sixers that Embiid is a guy that wants to keep his personal stuff a little private and the Sixers respect that and that's kind of why we're in the situation that we are in now to the Sixers media's credit Nick Nurse was directly asked about the status of Embiid and what his potential return could look like so this being written by Kai Carlin of Sixers Wire here and he writes Philadelphia 76ers big man Joel Embiid underwent a procedure for a meniscus injury in his left knee on February 6th he suffered the injury on a January 29th loss to the Golden State Warriors on the road the Sixers stated that the big fellow would be reevaluated in four weeks and they would have a better idea of a timeline for his return afterward. Five weeks later, an official status update has not been given. However, Coach Nick Nurse continued to say on Tuesday that Embiid has been on the court working. He did not give an update on a timetable for Embiid, uh, Embiid's return. Quote, I mean, I'm not really sure as far as his return, Nurse said of Embiid. I think it's been pretty widely reported that he has been on the court. I haven't seen him for a few days. Nurse didn't give any further details about the on-court work for Embiid. The big fella being on the court could mean he's running or putting up shots or simply just doing light work. So a lot to break down from this specifically uh, from Kai Carlin here. Great stuff as far as the input from Nick Nurse. But again, this is another example of the Sixers being very vague and not really saying much. And there are a lot of different interpretations of what being on the court means. If that means that he is putting up shots and having any sort of light jogging, to me, that is a great sign at this point in time. That if there's any sort of that type of movement, I would consider the Sixers well on schedule for him making a return this season. But we don't know that entirely to be fact yet. All we that he could be on the court if this means he's doing stretching workouts or just being on the court then that's a very just naive way to frame this and I do hope that's not the case but we do have a couple other quotes here this was spoken on the uh, most recent broadcast by Jared Greenberg that him saying quote multiple people within the organization tell me they remain hopeful that Joel Embiid will be back in the regular season but at this point still too early to know a timeline I'm told Embiid remains positive as he does some limited on-court work. Now, with that said, it's unclear when he will get cleared to play and then ultimately be ready to see game action. So another concern here is obviously the fitness level of Joel Embiid, that he is a guy who has not been known to be the highest of fitness level when it comes to things, and that's not been entirely his fault, that it is situations like this very one where the best case for him, his health for the sake of the team is is to get back to 100%. And the only way that truly gets done is by resting and allowing your body to heal. 
But the facts remain that when he returns to the floor, there's going to be high expectations for the level that he can play at. And if his body's not ready to take that, the Sixers could very well be putting him in a tough spot. And that's why I do think it's important to try to get him back for the regular season. As much as the playoffs are the only thing that matter, especially as the Sixers are slipping down these standings and the playing tournament looking more and more likely, I think the bottom line is health is number one. But getting a little bit of a ramp-up period, I think, would be very beneficial for both guys. And we did have some positive news from John Clark here, him saying that I'm told the, that Joel Embiid is still on track to return in the first or second week of April before the playoffs. So that's a little bit of a gap there. So I want to take a look at the six-year schedule as far as the way things play out. And there is just not a lot of games left in this season. I believe the count is 17. I'm recording this before their matchup against the Milwaukee Bucks, Bucks tonight. And to look at it, they do have this matchup against the Bucks. The Hornets, the Heat, a tough home or a tough road trip where they go to the West Coast for the Phoenix Suns, Los Angeles Lakers, launch it, Los Angeles Clippers, Sacramento Kings, then back home against the Clippers once again, who are playing some good basketball again, although Kawhi might have a little bit of an injury, so that is worth noting there. Then back again against the Cavs and the Raptors, and now we are in the beginning of April. So that April 2nd matchup against Oklahoma City probably would be a best case scenario for Joel Embiid, that being a national game at home, that is something that I could see the Sixers looking to attack but if he's not ready at that moment it wouldn't shock me if they held him out for this next road trip because after that game they had to Miami to Memphis and to San Antonio for three straight games before playing the final three games back at home against the Detroit Pistons Orlando Magic and Brooklyn Nets so those last three games I do think that's very much a possibility for his ramp up period if that is all he gets and frankly some pretty cakewalk games here not that these teams are are awful, awful, but the Pistons, they should be able to sleepwalk through. The Magic are playing some good ball, so I will give them a little bit more respect, more so than the other two in these, and the Brooklyn Nets are a team that have looked like a disaster for most of the season. So a nice way to have that ramp-up period and end the season, but it's going to be a different beast when he gets to the postgame. And I did just want to look a little more. Shout-out to Sixers Galaxy. I love the timelines that he's been keeping up with these, and he does a lot of awesome work here. And he says that Shams reported on Friday that Joel Embiid would most likely be out six to eight weeks. We're at exactly five weeks at the point of Joel Embiid's procedure. This tweet coming out on March 12th, being two days later at this point. But a February 2nd was the date of surgery for Joel. Six weeks out of that period would be March 19th. Seven weeks out, March 26th. And eight weeks out, April 2nd. So that would be that Oklahoma City Thunder game would be exactly eight weeks out. Now, some more notable dates that Philly Sixers Galaxy points out here. The first final regular season game would be April 14th. The start of the playoff, April 16th to April 19th, that being the play-in, and the playoffs on April 20th. So that is some intriguing timelines to keep an eye on there. Those are obviously what this is all for. And I still have a bit of optimism for the Sixers team if Embiid can return to the floor. I think people are underselling just how impactful this player is. Quite literally the most valuable player in the league and has been recognized as such. And with this specific Sixers roster, as much as we're picking them apart right now, everything makes a whole lot more sense when Joel Embiid is at the center of everything. Him being the son that each planet her orbits around in the Sixers team. That when you have a lineup with Joel Embiid on it, it makes a little more sense when you have guys like Nico Batum, Daniel, DeAnthony Melton, Kyle Lowry, all these players. And when you think about like the actual core of the Sixers team, the actual playoff rotation, it looks pretty solid. That we're talking about guys like Kyle Lowry, Buddy Heal, DeAnthony Melton, Kelly Oubre has absolutely cemented himself. Tyrese Maxey continues to take that next stride. That this is a team that can stack up against some real deal contenders. That I do think the Sixers are still a dangerous team in the East, but that's only the case if Joel Embiid is capable of playing like himself. That is the question that still needs to be answered and one that we likely still will not be able to know for a couple more weeks. So I am frustrated that we're not having the official just transparency from the Sixers organization and Joel Embiid himself, that I would feel better at this point in time if there just was this release that Joel Embiid is healing as expected. He is on track for the the eight-week recovery timeline, which is, again, at the back end of the expected timeline, which I kind of expected to be the case with Joel. But something like that, I think, would go a far way for calming people's nerves and increasing optimism for the playoffs. And again, this is the full half-glass full mentality, the way that I'm viewing this. But it could be the best case scenario for Joel Embiid, that we have not seen him have a healthy playoff run throughout the entirety of his playoff career. At him getting hurt at the time that he did, 
could pave the way for this to be the case. That only happens if the healing process goes smooth and he does look like himself when he does return, but we don't know that that is off the table yet. So until we do and that is the case, I'm going to remain optimistic in that point. But I do want to hear from you guys. Are you on the same wavelength as me? Are you still believing that Joel Embiid will step back on the floor and make an impact this year? Or are you ready to start looking at tech tickets for next year? Because I'm seeing some of that as well. Regardless, let me know in the comments. Make sure you're smashing that subscribe button to the Sixers Digest channel. Got to keep the Digest family growing. And drop a like on this video. Let me know you're listening. Appreciate every one of you. And I'll be talking to you next time right here on Sixers Digest.